Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2, Episode 1. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for the first episode of the new season. We have lots to talk about, this episode was pretty action-packed, although there wasn't like the most action ever. It kind of set up a lot of the storylines that were going on this season, and obviously we're going to be discussing all of them in today's video. But if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So the episode begins with a recap of what happened at the end of last season with Natalie arriving for the very first time on Earth Prime. She sees Lois, she calls her mom. We saw this at the end of the season and that's where we pick up. And what did Lois say? That is the big question seems she's rather speechless and then it weirdly cuts to three months later and you're like what the hell has happened and Lois looks tired and annoyed with Clark or is it something greater than that well this episode very much so digs into that and kind of corrects it by the end of the episode and so it was kind of tough to watch because you know you see the two of them at odds or specifically Lois annoyed with most people like both kids and Clark because of her own issues. And so on the other side of the coin, Natalie isn't okay. She is, again, like Lois, kind of off. And I think it's a bit more obvious that she's off because she's quite evidently clear about like what her issue is, right? She's come to this earth. She doesn't feel at home at all. And she's having a very difficult time trying to adapt. And it really doesn't help that Lois is there and, you know, she's her mum from another earth, but she hasn't done anything. And I think Lois's reaction when she first met Natalie and saw her at the end of last season has led to everything that has happened in this episode. But let's move on from here. So we have Superman and basically people are making merch, they're selling stuff. This annoys Kyle because, you know, he has his reasons, but not Lana and... At the end of the day, it's just people making money. That's what Lana said, like, it's good for the economy of Smallville. And so that's just a new thing in regards to Smallville. And so Sarah returns, and this is another storyline that kicks off. So she's been at summer camp as a counsellor all summer long. She's done this in the past, but this time, you know, she takes the counsellor role. And so it's a big step for her. She's been away for a month. Everyone's missed her, including Jordan and her parents, obviously. But she's come back and she's a bit different. And this is pretty obvious pretty soon after, as soon as Jordan is mentioned. Because it seems like something's either happened or she's kind of changed her mind a little bit about how she perceives the two of them. But we'll get more into that later in the video. And so we move on. We have Lois, who hates literally every new candidate for the Smallville Gazette. Just another example of her annoyance right now and, you know, the fact that she isn't herself. And talking of Sarah, Jordan listens in on Sarah and it's quite obvious that something is wrong. And she seems very uninterested in Jordan. Basically, she says, like, oh, it's the wrong time and, you know, I'm not feeling very well. And, you know, Jordan asks her, can you meet at this point? And they do go to the spot where they were arrested last season. And so... Jordan's surprise is very nice, candles in the river, but Sarah still feels something is off and, you know, she goes home later and basically Jordan is kind of left thinking, hmm, what's going on? And that is kind of spurred on by Jonathan, who puts the idea in his mind that maybe something's going on and something happened at camp or, you know, Sarah's different, I guess. And so in regards to Jonathan, You know, he's still doing his football thing. However, he's been on the bench still for a while and he's frustrated with his coach. And so another thing for Jonathan, we have him with a new girlfriend and this is a big part of this episode and his story because basically those two are kissing and they're in their room and basically they get caught being like half naked by Lois, which triggers one of her freak out episodes that she's having throughout this entire episode. And so let's talk a bit about Clark. We haven't really talked about Clark yet. So Clark keeps on hearing some noise and there's also earthquakes happening. There's two earthquakes in the episode and it seems like Smallville isn't used to earthquakes because none of them are really expecting it. And Kyle even blames it on like maybe new mining work. But the first sound that Clark hears is a sinking submarine. And so as he gets to the scene, as he gets to the sea, 
basically you get this first interference in Superman's head. He gets like this crushing headache and he crashes into the ocean. However, he's able to overcome that and we'll talk about that in a minute and basically save the submarine and they get really excited when it's Superman who saved him. But then we get the introduction of the new DOD guy in charge and that person is Lieutenant Mitch Anderson and so him and Superman have a talk and basically America is annoyed by Superman saving the North Korean submarine which wasn't revealed earlier and it was a nuclear submarine and he basically saved them and gave them the submarine back and so you know the people in charge in America are annoyed because that's basically their opposition right however Superman is the protector of Earth so he makes it pretty clear that his allegiance is with America and it has been for a long time and he's proved it many times over and over again However, he's not going to kind of conform to what this new lieutenant, Mitch Anderson, wants. And so that's because he's a hero for Earth and he doesn't need to prove it. And so basically, he's a new replacement for General Lane. We're going to be seeing more of him this season as we head into whatever storyline we're heading into right now. There's also the introduction of some super soldiers who are part of a new team that Lieutenant Mitch Anderson is building. That's revealed later in the episode when the second earthquake goes off and so you get to see them and they are people with special abilities it seems and he's forming a team and he basically puts the House of El symbol on the chest not because it means anything to him but because it's a sign for America and it's a sign for the world that you know they are powerful and they should be feared I guess and Superman doesn't approve of that obviously because it's his you know family symbol that's what Kara wears, that's what he wears, it's what, you know, all of them wear because that's the House of L symbol. It doesn't mean anything else but to America and to this new lieutenant, it means something greater. And so that's why he's using it. Okay, so we go over to Natalie, who has taken on the name Natalie Johnson. And so she's gone to her school, what she would normally go to on her Earth, but on Earth Prime. And so she's completely annoyed, like I said earlier, this entire episode and basically that this isn't her world and you know everything seems off and she can't adapt to it basically and so let's go back to Lois for just a minute so Clark and Lois have a talk and you're like oh maybe finally they're going to actually discuss what has been annoying Lois this whole time however she won't go into the good reason for what's happening with her and Lois is basically worried that she can't control their children like she's worried about Jordan she's worried about Jonathan like, are they growing up too fast? What are they doing? Basically worried that they are becoming adults way too fast and, you know, she has no control over that. And obviously that is pretty scary if you're a parent. But at the end of the day, she has to trust her kids. And so it seems like some of that trust comes back towards the end of the episode, especially because of Clark and, you know, him talking to them and him talking to Lois. And then we go over to Lana's house. And so Lana is working with this new mayoral candidate named Daniel Hart. And so Clark shows up at this event. And basically, it's just like an introduction for the whole town. Like, everyone's invited to meet Daniel Hart. And he seems like a great guy and Lana's doing really good. You can see that she is really into his policies and everything. And obviously Kyle is a bit jealous. And so that's a thing for him this episode that he eventually overcomes. Because I guess at first he's a little bit worried that they're spending so much time together. And his brain is going off like what has actually happened behind the scenes. Why is she so committed to this person? Those are just some of the questions that are popping off in his head. And so continuing the saga with Lois, this episode, like, she gets annoyed when Jordan comes home and he's not feeling good. It's pretty obvious by the look on his face, but she doesn't read that. And so she doesn't respond. She snaps at him and basically you're like, huh, I guess Lois really has something kind of wrong with her right now. And it's pretty clear throughout the entire episode, but I think here more than anything, with Jordan not feeling good, it especially emphasizes how in the wrong Lois is, and, you know, she has to deal with this, she has to confront whatever it is that she's dealing with face on, because she, being like this, isn't good for anyone else. And so, same goes for Kyle, with, you know, his jealousy, and, but obviously Lois and Natalie have they're similar things that they are going through, but like on the other side. And although I think Natalie's annoyance is definitely warranted, 
I feel like a couple of times throughout the episode it was a bit over the top because it happened so many times that she was just like purely screaming or like raising her voice at her dad and you know I felt kind of bad for him but I completely get where she's getting from but maybe it was like a tad over the top for me but Lois I definitely believed in everything and I thought Bitsy Tolo did a very good job with selling this because you're like wow I guess Lois really has something going on with her, and it's pretty damn clear. Let's talk a bit about Sarah. Now, remember I mentioned earlier that Jonathan thinks that Sarah could be lying about being ill, and that she might be doing something else, and obviously this kind of is plaguing on Jordan's mind, and he doesn't get any resolution by the end of the episode, this is going to be continued, obviously, and this is kind of, you know, the relationship drama side of the show, and so Sarah thinks Jordan is too much. That is revealed as Sarah talks to her dad, Kyle, and so I thought it was kind of weird to include this, like it painted her in a way that Jordan was kind of the bad one, which I feel really bad for him because, you know, he's an introvert, he has to come out of his shell, and I think it's really amazing that he's come so far and he's that confident now, and I thought Kyle's comment to Sarah about her being, you know, the alpha dog, I thought that was kind of mean. I don't know if any of you guys got that same reaction, but I was like, damn, poor Jordan, like, he's just trying to be a good boyfriend and, you know, be good in the relationship, and, you know, I think Sarah's done everything right so far, and, you know, we were kind of questioning what was happening this episode, why was she not being very warm to Jordan? Well, it seems that she doesn't like that Jordan is being too much, and yeah, it's definitely right what Kyle said to go talk to him and say that, yeah, Maybe you're being a bit too much, but it's okay because, you know, I like you, I love you, and this, that, and the other. But I think if Sarah really has something wrong, like, and she feels, you know, the relationship isn't good, say something rather than thinking of herself as kind of better than Jordan, when, you know, they're just different personalities, that's it at the end of the day. So I just thought it was a bit weird. I think coming from like an introvert side myself, that was kind of a little bit of a sting and maybe you guys felt that as well. So let's move on from that because that is kind of where we leave off that storyline for this episode. So let's go back to Clark and Lois who are having the same problems that Kyle and Lana are having. And so this is where Clark and Lana talk about this and this is after the party's finished and everyone has gone home and it's just them and you know Clark has given some advice basically saying that yeah Kyle you know maybe was a bit jealous and I did talk to him but you should definitely go talk to him just like Clark does at the end of the episode with Lois who finally explains her problems and basically she reveals that she felt absolutely nothing when Natalie came out of the pod and called her mum. Now at that moment at the start of the episode in our heads we're like Lois is gonna freak out like how is she gonna deal with this and obviously being speechless is probably the most natural way to go about it because as you know Lois did have a Natalie but her Natalie obviously died in childbirth and so that's gonna be traumatic seeing a version of Natalie in real life and on the other side you have Natalie who is like mum and then she gets no response and Lois is just cold to her so obviously she's going to be absolutely devastated by that and so she's not going to know what to think about that and so basically Lois explains yeah she felt nothing for Natalie and she thinks that she is becoming her mum because basically when she was young her mum left her and Lucy that's where we get our first mention of Lucy Lane we're going to talk a bit more about Lucy probably this week because there has been some comments that came out in regards to Lucy Lane showing up in Superman Lois obviously we first saw her on Supergirl so definitely got some interesting thoughts to talk about later this week in regards to that but so Lois thinks that she's becoming her mum but Clark reassures her that she's not becoming her mum you know that is just a natural thing she had no idea what to think in that instance because it's completely surreal like, she's never seen this person before, and the thought that by saying nothing, she is just as bad as, you know, a mum leaving their kids, is very, very tough on herself. Like, I think she's been very tough. Because what Lois has done so far hasn't been extreme, but you can tell that she has second thoughts inside her head, and that's why she's been acting like this, and every time Clark has brought up about talking to Natalie, you know, she's kind of 
got annoyed because these thoughts have been popping into her head every time that she's reminded. So I thought this was a really cool way to kind of wrap up the story and it gets better because we have Lois who meets with Natalie as Natalie and John Henry Irons come to Smallville and so they meet in a diner and Natalie instantly storms out when she sees Lois because obviously, you know, it's a big deal the meeting for the first time since, you know, three months ago when Natalie first arrived on Earth and got that cold ass response from Lois. And so basically she sits on the bench outside, Lois goes over, they have a mini chat and they come to the conclusion that it would be great if they're friends because, you know, they both need each other in their lives and they both feel bad for everything that's happened. Like, in regards to Lois, obviously, she feels bad about how she responded, and she wants to make up for that, and I guess it would be nice to know Natalie because she never got to know her Natalie, and for Natalie, it's nice to have that acquaintance with your mum's doppelganger, and even if it's not your mum, being friends could be a good thing, and I do like how they kind of tied that up. And their story continues as... Lois brings back Natalie and John Henry Irons to move into the Kemp farm temporarily. So this means we're going to be seeing lots of Natalie and John Henry Irons around the Kemp farm and around Smallville until they find a new place and I do think they'll find a new place this season but I do think they're going to stick around Smallville because I think it's going to be good for them and specifically for Natalie to get away from Metropolis and get away from that past life and basically start something new similar to how the Kents moved to Smallville and started a new life in Smallville away from familiarity and it turned out to be good for them so I think it's going to be very good for Natalie and also John Henry Irons obviously as a father. Okay so let's move on so we mentioned earlier that the super soldiers appear and this is as another earthquake appears so these earthquakes happen twice in this episode and you're like what's going on? We know there's going to be some big reveal at some point but the first reveal we get is that there are these super soldiers who are going around saving people in the mines in Smallville and so Clark, as he finds them, gets one of those headaches again and he has no idea what those headaches are and neither do we frankly and like I'm pretty sure we still don't know by the end of the episode and we get kind of an answer but I don't know if it's directly related but you can presume it's related. And so then we move on and we have Lieutenant Mitch Anderson who is talking with Superman again and basically he wants Superman to be a part of this new team that he is creating of super soldiers and obviously Superman doesn't want to pledge his allegiance to America and to his team because he works alone and he has already proved you know his worthiness in the past to America and his allegiance as we mentioned earlier in the video. But it's a big deal because these super soldiers are going to be sticking around, they're going to be showing up in presumably many episodes this season as we get to know more and more about Lieutenant Mitch Anderson and his plans over at the DoD. And you have to remember, I'm pretty sure they didn't throw away all of their kryptonite and all the tests that General Lane was doing last season, so I'm pretty sure they have a hold of that tech. and. At some point, you can presume Lieutenant Mitch Anderson is going to go after Superman if Superman does another thing wrong. Obviously, the submarine was like the first step of their conflict, which will continue over the next couple of episodes, and I don't know at what point it will end. But let's go on to the end of the episode. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So Clark hears something again, and he keeps on hearing stuff this episode. And it seems it's revealed that this is the cause of the earthquake because something is going on deep beneath the earth, beneath the mines, and beneath Smallville. As suddenly out of nowhere, as the camera goes down through these rocks, you get a hand clenching onto a rock. And so it seems, and lots of people theorized after the episode came out that this arm belongs to, in fact, Doomsday, who's going to be one of the main villains of the season, and this was confirmed in an interview just after the episode came out by showrunner Todd Helbing. So he confirmed that in episode 2, you're going to get more Doomsday, you're going to get a little bit of a tease, and then in episode 3, you're going to get the full reveal of Doomsday. So it's kind of crazy that he came out and confirmed it, like straight away after the episode aired. Obviously, this was an interview conducted before the episode, 
but it's kind of crazy because it's not that obvious that it's Doomsday. It does hint towards Doomsday due to, you know, the way that he first appears. But anyway, I'm really, really excited. I can't wait to see Superman Lois's version of Doomsday. We've never had Doomsday in the Arrowverse, so that is super, super exciting. So that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe, turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any videos. Also, please be sure to click on the top right corner of the screen right now to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching the Superman Lois review, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.